To folks in markets like these, it is tough enough figuring out what to do in stocks or bonds or commodities or currencies. How about figuring out what to do with all of them at the same time? Dennis Statman is one of the world's biggest multi-asset class money managers. He runs more than $80 billion of funds at BlackRock, and he was one of the nominees for Morningstar International Fund Manager of the Decade. Dennis, welcome back to the Inside Track. Does it feel to you after yesterday's market and looking at what you see this morning like maybe we're putting in a bottom, a bottom for stocks, maybe Treasury yields have bottomed out as well, and we've seen the worst of the U.S. dollar, that kind of market bottom? That's a possibility. I think a lot of it uh, simply gets down to events in Europe and whether things calm down there. That's the greatest area of risk right now. But certainly there's been a tremendous amount of volume, big price changes, and uh, people who are desperate to get out uh, probably have done so. And prices have changed enough so that long-term value-oriented investors are interested in buying when the market's uh, down and weak. Now, do you put yourself into that camp, a long-term value-oriented investor who is buying right now, or are you feeling as though perhaps the best course of action is still a little risk aversion? We run a very diversified portfolio, and the nature of our portfolio, stocks, bonds, and cash equivalents, is such that when the market gets very weak, the market pulls down our equity weighting. And we certainly don't want to have our lowest equity weighting at market lows. So we're sort of automatically uh, attuned to be buying. Uh, when prices are down, and then we have to ask ourselves, does the market offer value? And we certainly think the market uh, does offer value now uh, in the developed markets. Uh, with the S&P in the mid-1100s, you're talking about a P.E. ratio uh, in the 11s, and that's a very undemanding valuation. One does not have to have an optimistic outlook for the future to believe that offers good long-term value. Then if you look at dividend yields, uh, they're superior in many cases to what uh, is available on Treasury bonds, and you can get uh, dividend yields above Treasury bonds for companies whose dividends are likely to grow. That seems to me to be a compelling proposition if you have a time horizon that's longer than a, a few uh, days, weeks, or months. Dan, uh, before the break, you were telling us that equities seem really attractive trading at 11 times earnings. We're talking about the S&P 500. So what doesn't look attractive to you in a market like this? Uh, government bonds, Treasury bonds in particular, there is such a premium today on avoiding nominal risk and avoiding volatility and searching desperately for yield within fixed income that Treasury bond prices are so high and yields are so low that they seem very unattractive to us. For example, a five-year Treasury only yields 1%. Uh, you put your money out for five years and before taxes and before inflation, you get back a dollar and five cents after five years. That doesn't work for us. Uh, you're getting a, a yield of about 2.3% on the 10-year right now. You're getting just about the same yield on a German 10-year bond. Given your concerns about Europe, which you mentioned a few moments ago, which presents the greater risk in your mind? The problem that we see with uh, Germany, and of course Germany's economy in many ways is an enviable one, is the future of the euro is highly uncertain and also the degree to which Germany uh, will end up paying for the weaker countries in Europe is very uncertain. Uh, we would suggest to investors that they stay diversified, but to us neither uh, of those yields or bond markets look attractive. Do you have confidence in Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, particularly in his latest move this week, an aggressive move to extend super low rates through middle of 2013? Mr. Bernanke is a very hardworking uh, and smart man with a great background. I don't believe the Fed's policies have been effective either in employment or price stability over the long term. Having said that, uh, the Fed has managed to keep the banking system uh, working well and keep uh, liquidity in place. However, uh, I don't believe that uh, having essentially zero interest rates forever is going to fix what's wrong with the U.S. economy.
Well, Dennis, there is clearly a lot wrong with the U.S. economy. And the way the markets have been trading this week, many of the people we spoke to think they're pricing in something in the order of a 50 percent risk of recession. What would you put the, the risk of recession at? Uh, I'm not sure that we've ever really gotten out of the recession that uh, occurred because of the collapse of the house finance bubble. And essentially, this so-called recovery has not been strong enough to get employment going again. So I think rather than worrying about are we going into a recession technically or not, we just have to face up uh, to the fact that the economy faces a significant headwind of deleveraging. And also, the bear market and housing uh, seems to be ongoing. And as long as you have uh, so many people in the population concerned about uh, their major asset uh, being weak, uh, and as long as you have a big overhang of debt in the economy, uh, we're going to be faced with uh, a weak economy until we make some basic structural changes. Telling us some really interesting and provocative things in a few minutes, and I want to remind everybody what you were saying, that perhaps we never came out of the last recession, so the thought of a double dip or the next recession may actually be a bit of a false notion. And also that Ben Bernanke, as smart as he is, uh, may be making a big mistake with a zero interest rate policy headed into 2013. So the question to you, Dennis, is, is this why you continue to be a fan of gold? Well, we do have a gold position, and our gold position really reflects uh, the fact that the major currencies of the world are not being managed primarily to maintain them as a store of value. And so we have to look elsewhere uh, for basic stores of value, and gold is a reasonable alternative to the major currencies. Having said that, of course, we got involved in gold when it was at a much lower price, and uh, gold at seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars an ounce is a different proposition than gold at eight hundred dollars an ounce. Uh, also, the gold price has become considerably more volatile, so there's plenty of risk in gold as well as other financial assets. Dennis, you told us at the outset of the conversation that the focus right now needs to be on Europe. Explain to us what you're watching in Europe and how worried you are that, that the train is going to run off the tracks there. Uh, what I was responding to is uh, the question of whether it's time to put money to work in the markets today. And the markets, in my view, the stock market uh, in the U.S., uh, and for that matter, Japan, and to some degree, Europe, offers good valuation, in fact, very attractive valuation. It seems to me that what could go wrong in the short term is simply more trouble in Europe, uh, specifically uh, with European government finances and European banks. There's not a lot of transparency uh, in the European banking system with respect uh, to asset values, with respect to derivatives books. And that's what has people worried uh, today. And if we have uh, an increasing uh, degree of worry in a banking crisis and a funding crisis over there, uh, that's going to put pressure on asset values in the short term. With the economic picture deteriorating, oil has really been knocked off its highs from above $100 a barrel. You have liked the energy sector before. Now do you scoop in and find some bargains? Uh, yeah, we continue to like oil. Our exposure to oil is for long-term reasons. Uh, the world is using more and more oil. Every day, there's another 50,000 cars on the road in China, and they're burning gasoline. Uh, when uh, a, a barrel of oil uh, is sold, it gets burned. It goes away. It's gone forever. And finding a replacement for that barrel is getting increasingly expensive. So existing reserves of oil, we think, are going to continue to be more valuable over the coming few years. Dennis, given the way the world economy is shaping up, slow, slow growth in the United States, slow growth in Europe, we have no idea how long it's going to take before that picks up. And the prospects of slowdowns in other countries like China, what does the future look like for a money manager? Are we facing the possibility that there will be no absolute return or limited absolute return, and for somebody like you, maybe just relative outperformance? Uh, let's not get too bleak uh, on the return outlook. Uh, I, as I've said, I 
am not optimistic about government bond returns. They're very low, and there's a good deal of uh, risk of interest rates going up and hurting people on principle over an extended period of time. In the equity markets, though, as I mentioned, uh, valuations are very undemanding. Uh, you could have a mediocre economy in the developed uh, countries for a long time and yet uh, have corporate managements continue to deliver profitability and going in at 11 times earnings uh, gives us room to, to make good money I think. Dennis, we love having you here on the Inside Track. Dennis Statman runs 80 billion at BlackRock.